Welcome back guys. So today we're taking a look at another case for our Raspberry Pi 3. So I've looked at tons of cases over the past year and you know a lot of these companies keep one-upping each other but sometimes they miss some small details. They do something wrong. Some do something right and then they misstep on something else. It's crazy, man. I don't think there's the perfect case out there. Not yet. But today, that may change. I think I may have found my new favorite case. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Pi Boxy from iUniker. iUniker, pretty awesome company. Um, I've been in contact with them for a little while. They've shown me a lot of prototypes of things that they're working on and man they, they they really got this stuff down as far as what the community wants so if you remember they did do the little dual fan heat sink um and little acrylic case they've been doing a lot of accessories you know a lot of little things that you can get you know from multiple sources and whatnot you know screens and all that but today they're introducing the Pi Boxy, like I said, little Nintendo themed case, really small, really small. Working power and reset, both safe. Does come with a, a little IR remote that you can power on safely, you know, if you have this by your TV and you're good 10 feet away, boom, power on. Pretty awesome stuff, easy install several different options as far as fans and whatnot. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a close up look at this case, see what the box comes with. How do we install the system? Does it pass the ultimate test of inserting and removing a micro SD card? How does it perform with the power and reset safe shutdowns? Let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> So we get this pretty awesome little box, the little Pi Boxy logo there, entertainment system. Looks looks like, you know, the, uh, the NES Pi box. Pretty cool stuff. But inside the box, you do get some screws, screwdriver, your, your Pi Boxy case. Pretty good stuff. You get your... IR remote, pretty simple, you know, one little push, power on, power off. Looks like it uses a CR2025 battery, okay. And you do get a step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to install everything. And you do need to install a little script. I'm not sure where if that's the script or not. Looks like it may be. So it's explaining how to, you know, how to burn a, a RetroPie image from the official website. Insert your SD card. Once you've done that, connect your Pi to the internet. Blah 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 blah. Access the terminal which you would hit F4 and type in the one line command below. As you see there, pretty nice stuff. So we'll go ahead and do that in a moment, but let's see how easy it is to install a Pi into this box. So the first thing you notice is there are no screw holes on the bottom. These feet are just little rubber feet. There are no screws underneath them. Um, the case is secured with these little tabs on the side and they're held in pretty nicely. So here is our power control board designed by Pi Boxy. Okay, cool stuff. So the cool thing with this is we do have a couple spots on the power board here to put fans. So you could actually put two fans, I guess. Um, 
I'm curious to see if we could leave this fan in and put the dual fan heat sink fan and see if that works. So kind of curious on that. Let's, let's, let's give that a try anyway, just as a temporary thing. Don't know if I necessarily want to keep it that way. So let's take a look at the instructions. How do we put the, the little link on there? So this slides into the GPIO as such. And it looks like you need to make sure these red cables are up here on that side. Pretty good stuff. Let's go ahead and it does show, you know, positive and negative on the actual little board there for the fans. So let's put our fan there. I'm curious as to where this is going to sit. So we line this up with these little holes, if you can see them, just four little screw holes. Everything lines up pretty nicely. Let's go ahead and see if everything will go in there with the dual fan, heat sink, and the extra fan. See how that works out. I don't know if they necessarily want you to do it that way, but we're going to go ahead and try. Why not? Let's try to get these screws in straight. We'll just do two of them for now. Oops. Maybe unplug the, the dual fan before we get the, uh, to put the screw in first. Kind of blocking my way. Got that in there. I don't really have the dual fan um, secured. You know, I have a the little thermal tape. This is an old one, um, or the little the little foam tape that they gave you. It's probably better to buy thermal tape with this uh, heat sink. I never had an issue using the uh, the little pad that came with it, but a lot of people said that we should probably be using thermal tape, um, which I agree, but this one's an old one that I haven't used in a while and it still has the original on there, so figured might as well just leave it for now. So let's see if we can get everything in there and close. And to my surprise, that is awesome. We have both of the fans in there. We have the, the included fan that comes with the system. We also have their dual fan heat sink. So now this, this little sucker is a little hefty here. Um, everything's secure. Doesn't seem like the, uh, the top is gonna come off um, unless you pull it. Like I said, there's just those tabs on the side to hold it in place. Uh, so we do have our HDMI on the side, 3.5 millimeter jack there. Our micro SD card slot, we'll have to see in a second how easy it is to remove and insert our power on the side here. And then up front, we do have all of our four USBs and our Ethernet port. Pretty good stuff. So I'm assuming this is the power LED and then this is the IR receiver. So let's go ahead. I've got a micro SD card right here. Let's go ahead and see if we can easily insert and remove. So easy enough to get it in, no big deal. And easy enough to get it out. So definitely love that. The buttons are kind of small, but very clicky. It's got that nice 
you know, nostalgic look to it. You know, a lot of people would prefer if these said Nintendo on them, but obviously, you know, these people are, are trying to sell these on Amazon and whatnot. And, you know, you're not going to infringe completely on Nintendo's copyright and trademarks. So Pi Boxy Entertainment System, I actually like the branding. I have no issue with that, but you can remove this with a magic eraser and put your own decal on there if you so choose. So now that we got everything installed, let's go ahead and power this bad boy up, install, install the script and see how everything works and see if it does function with those two fans in there. So let's go ahead, plug it in and get this party started. Okay guys, so I've got the little pie boxy going. Now that I'm really messing with it, I've got a little bit more of an opinion on this. I love the way it looks, but let me show you in a second. So to install the script, and I've already done so, on your main screen when you boot up your RetroPie image, you hit F4 on the keyboard, right? Go to your command prompt. And then you will want to type in, you know, way up there, that, you know, little line. Pretty simple stuff. It takes a couple minutes to install. Once it's installed, you have that safe power and reset. The IR remote works just fine. If you're, you know, the one thing that I come across with uh, IR remotes, not in my area that I work right here, but in some areas, I will have, uh, like I'll have ambient lights set up, like weird stuff like that that uses IR remotes. And this will interfere with that and vice versa. So you want to kind of, to me, I'm not even going to use the IR remote, but if you do, just keep that in mind. If you have other things that are controlled by infrared, eh, there could be some kind of issues there. Down here where I work, no issue whatsoever, even though I do have a lot of devices around, but in other spots of my house, when I've tried this, I do come across that issue where when I power this off, it'll trigger something else but it'll still power off. So that's just one thing of note. But before we wrap this up, like I said, the power and reset does work, but I just wanna show this, this kind of annoys me a little bit, but okay, so I've got a keyboard plugged in, in the front. We got HDMI on the side and then power on the side. I honestly, I, I think that really ruins the aesthetic and I don't know why I didn't like have that in mind when I unboxed this and looked at it but now that I'm looking at it that's kind of a pain in the butt for me anyway um, it doesn't look horrible but it just it looks like a freaking tentacle monster like what's going on here power should have been on the back HDMI should have been on the back or power and HDMI on the same side putting them in all weird directions, it, it that bothers me. Uh, you know, it it detracts aesthetically. Functionally, this case is awesome. I do have both fans running. You don't even hear them. Both fans are running. The dual fan heat sink and the included fan. They're both you know chipping away, doing their thing. I I've taken the top off. I can see that they are working. I'll show you right here. It's kind of hard to show, but both fans are chugging away. Um, the one thing, if you do do this with this fan or this case, you have to make sure this wire is kind of, you got to watch where you're putting it because it could, if you set it wrong, you hear that, could hit the, uh, the, other, the other fan. I'm, I'm a big fan of the dual fan heat sink. And when you do put it together, you just want to kind of make sure all these big fat wires are kind of tucked to the side. But yeah, just looking at this, you know, I understand, you know, they, they put the power on the side for the board over on this side and then the HDMI straight to the Pi. But I kind of wish that the board had the power on this side at, at least, you know what I mean? I could deal with, you know, the weirdness of both of them being over here. Um, but I, I guess maybe with the design of this and how small they made it, that's just the way they went. But see, I'm, I'm screwing it up. But I, I do, 
that's my biggest con is I love the look of this thing. I love the functionality. I love the safe power and reset and it works just fine. I've tested it. Just hit reset right now. My system's going to reset. Um, if I hit power, you see it's a little blue LED. Um, you know, everything works great, but it's just having the wires coming out of all different angles. Now, if I didn't have a keyboard attached and I had a Bluetooth controller attached, that would be, a, you know, all right. But for me, it's kind of awkward because I have my, you know, I'm going through a capture card. My capture card's right here. Uh, and it's a very short, you know, HDMI. I try not to have too much going on here. Um, even if I used a longer one, it wouldn't matter. It's still just kind of awkward because everything's on this side of my setup and my power's over there. I don't have my power going one way and then my HDMI going the other way. So the streams kind of cross here. And you're not supposed to cross the streams. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to point that out. That bothers me. That's my biggest con. I love the look of this little bastard. I love the ease of, you know, the micro SD card going in and out. I love the power and reset. Love that the IR remote works, even though I would never use it. it it's a beautiful looking case, but just the placement of that power bothers me. I'm going to use this, but I'm just not super excited that, that it's an octopus. It's a tentacle monster. It is what it is, guys. If you're interested, I will have a link down in the description for both this case, which does come with the little fan, and also the dual fan heat sink, which is one of my favorites. So peep it out, smash that like button, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. Boom.